Hi, everybody, and welcome. My name is Alex Chisholm, and I'm the product manager for Posit Cloud here at Posit. In this first installment of Posit Cloud Essentials, we're going to cover everything you need to know about getting started with a free account in just a few clicks. Posit Cloud is an online platform where you can do and share data science in your favorite coding and languages, all from the comfort of your web browser. In essence, Posit Cloud makes it easy for you to manage a variety of data projects in siloed, reproducible environments that contain your code, your data, and your results, all of which can be shared. A space in Posit Cloud serves as the building block for the tool. You can create R projects in the RStudio IDE or work natively with Python and Jupyter. You can publish data applications and documents from cloud or from an external environment such as RStudio Desktop or VS Code. You can also securely store database connections to power your projects and outputs using a set of 16 included professional drivers. Finally, you can invite members to your space to collaborate on work or to simply showcase your results, all the while keeping your eye on usage analytics for specific pieces of content. Posit Cloud is a freemium tool. This means that you're able to create a free account and gain access to all of its functionality. If you happen to run into limitations in terms of compute power or number of published outputs, feel free to explore the affordable and flexible paid plans. On today's demo, we're gonna create a free account, set up our first space, and then do some real work. Let's get started by going to posit.cloud. So when you get to posit.cloud, you're gonna find a variety of options and information about the tool. The first thing you wanna do is set up an account. You can click on get started to start the process. You'll see a variety of plans. Today, we're just gonna start with a free plan. When you click sign up, you're gonna be able to either put in an email and password along with your first and last name, or you can sign up directly from something like uh, Gmail with Google or GitHub. I'm gonna go ahead and use Google. So I have an account already set up on, on Gmail for this demo. I'm gonna click it. And we've now created my Posit Cloud account. It's going to redirect me into the tool for us to begin doing work. When you first log in, you're gonna be brought to an area called your workspace. You might wanna think about this area like a playground. You can create new projects and experiment with publications. But for this demo, we're gonna create a more functional space called a new space by clicking this button. And when I do this, why don't we go ahead and name it? We'll name it Biostats. So if I create this new space, you can see that I'm brought into something that looks relatively similar to that first area we went into, but there are more tabs and there, there is more functionality in here that we're gonna use throughout the, the demo. The first thing I wanna do is create a data connection. You don't have to do it this way, but since we're gonna use this for our example, might as well start there. So if you go across the top of the pane and click on data, you can see that there are no current data connections and I can go ahead and add one. By clicking on driver, you can see all of the different types of database connections that we can save. I'm gonna use Postgres and I'll go ahead and name this connection RNA Central. For this example, we're going to use a public data set or database, I should say, which you can find more information on rnacentral.org, including the credentials to, to log in and start making queries against it. So for now, I'm just going to paste in all the information I need here. First, I have my server, I got my port number, I'm going to bring in the database name itself, and then finally, my username and password. You'll notice when, you've, when I pasted in the password here that we don't actually see what it is. We're also going to be able to save this as an encrypted variable, which will become an environment variable when we open up our studio in a few moments. So let's go ahead and hit OK. I now have my database connection stored. I'm going to go back to content and we'll create our first project. Clicking this blue button, I can create either an RStudio project or a Jupyter project. I can also create one going straight to a GitHub repo. 
But for now, we're gonna go ahead and create a new RStudio project. So this should take around 20 seconds to deploy. And during this time, I might as well go ahead and rename my project. And we'll just call this RNA analysis. So we're up and running. We have a fully functioning RStudio IDE session here. And we have to decide what do we want to do next. And typically, one of the first things you're doing in data analysis, right, is connecting to some kind of data source. So we can go and retrieve that connection we made earlier. And if I go in here to the upper right-hand panel and click on connections, click new connection, you'll see what we saved earlier is already here. So I'm gonna click this and we'll see that our studio is gonna give us the ability to create some credentials to make the connection. First, I'll test it. So testing is gonna go out, it's gonna install the packages that I need for this specific type of Postgres database connection. And you can also see that one, it is a success. Two, you can see in the script that's gonna be made for our connection, we're using a environmental variable to mask the, the password. So we don't need to keep the password of this database in the script that we use. Why don't I go ahead and load this in a new R script and we can load the, the package that we need, ODBC and also DBI. I can go ahead and make my connection. Once that connection is made, you'll see again in the connections tab, all of the different tables and schemas available to us from this connection. We wanna do a little bit more. Let's we'll start querying this. And one good package to do that is dbplyr. Maybe I'll save this script as connect. I don't yet have dbplyr installed, so let's go ahead and do that. dbplyr is going to allow us to use relatively straightforward commands to go out to the database run some queries and bring back data. Along with that installation, we get dplyr, which will help with some of, the, um, some of the code to get this. So let me also load that library. And now I'm just gonna bring in as an example, some code that says, let's make a new variable called results. I'm gonna go out to this table within the database. I happen to know that it is in the table called RNA. I only want to get the top 100 rows, but I do want to bring this back to me so I can look at what's in there. So if I run this, if I load the libraries and then run this, you can see now we've stored a variable named results. If I click on the environment tab, I'll be able to see results. Clicking on it shows me the 100 records and the type of variables that we have in here. So that's great. We were able to go out from our database connection, grab some real data, and now we can do something with it. I also want to add on the bottom here, just a database disconnect if I were to run that script later on so we can kill our connection to that database. Now, what if I wanted to take the information that we saw and put it into an interactive report? Well, I can go ahead in the same session and create a new shiny web app. And this is going to ask me to install packages related to Shiny, which is relatively quick. And we're gonna take the base example and we're gonna swap in this real database connection uh, to have a, a new example that we can use to test the functionality of both creating these interactive applications and then publishing it to cloud. So maybe we call the application RNA. I'm now in a Shiny script and I can do a few things. First, I just want to bring this data or bring this, this code sequence over to my app. And I'm just going to paste it at the top. Maybe clean it up a little bit, move the libraries next to each other. I still want to go out to and get a connection uh, to this database. Now that I'm going to move into the actual application, maybe I don't want just 100 records, maybe I want 2,000 records. Um, and I'll leave this, this disconnect here as well so that when the application goes out, grabs the data, it also closes the connection. So then we want to work this new data into this example. And we'll go through and just change a few things from the stock example that isn't here. Maybe we call this RNA analysis. And leave all of this. One important thing I'm going to do is change my, my data. I no longer want to take... Um, 
the, the, the sample data, I want to bring in results, and I want that length variable. And then finally, we can just do a few things to, to change uh, how it looks. Uh, maybe I get rid of the X uh, label, X access label completely, and then I change the overall title to RNA length. I think we've done everything that we need. We need. I can also probably simplify my, my call to the database. I know I only need that length variable. Maybe I'll bring in the ID and length. All right, so now we have what I think is an updated app based upon that data connection that we made. Why don't we go ahead and preview this? And let's try to get this to show up in the viewer pane so that we all can see it here. I'm gonna run my app. Yep, and it worked. We can see that we still have this slider to control uh, the, the number of bins within our histogram. But from the data that we're pulling in, once again, live from this database, we can see that we kind of have a, a split distribution with a lot of records that are up in that 1500 range, and then several that are down 500 and below. So that's great, right? We, we've gone through, we've made a shiny app, we've brought in real data to it. What is fantastic about Posit Cloud is you can also now publish this app specifically to your space, either to go straight there next time when you want to see the maybe updated results, or if you want to share it with other people without having to let them into your project. So why don't I, I'm going to, I'm going to cancel this, and now we're going to move over to publishing. This is the push button publisher within the RStudio IDE. If I click on this, it's going to ask me again to install some packages. These packages are going to assist with the publishing process. And once this is ready, it's going to ask me for a few different things. Um, the first thing is going to ask, which are the files you want from this folder to upload? Right now, I only have this application.r file, so that's the only one I'm going to bring up. It's going to ask me, where am I going to try to publish this to? And what is fantastic is just by setting up this new Posit Cloud account, we have already matched your, your tokens and your secrets and all those credentials that you need to publish um, automatically. So when you press publish now, it will put all of this, this interactive application into your own space. So I'll click this. Given the size of this and the amount of files that we're putting up, um, this will probably take a couple of minutes. So let me show you a few other things. You might have noticed the, the RAM indication at the top. So that's telling us how much of our available memory we're using. Right now we're at about 50%. If I click on the gear, we can see that we can add in analysis or we can add in a description that'll show up later. So analysis of RNA data, maybe is what we want to put. I click access. I can see that only I can see this right now, but maybe we want everybody to see this. So I'm going to change it to everybody in biostats. And then finally, if you wanted to change the RAM or the compute or the background execution time, you can do that from these toggles. This is a free account. So if you tried to go over one gigabyte of RAM, for instance, it would tell you you can't do that. Um, and you would have to upgrade into a paid plan uh, to get up to, to 16 and very soon 32 gigabytes um, of memory. And now I think this is ready to launch. And what will happen, it'll try to put it up in a new tab. It blocks it, the browser blocks it initially. But if you hit try again, so this pops up in a new tab. We have our interactive application going out, grabbing the data from the database and allowing the user to then change the number of bins associated with the histogram for the length variable. So this is pretty cool. If I click back on biostats into my space, I'm gonna see a few things. I now have two pieces of content. I have my shiny application and I have the RNA analysis project. When we were going through the project, we already decided to make the um, the project be available for all space members. You can see that this project has created one output, which is this RNA app. But you can see that the app itself is set to private right now. If I go to the dot, dot, dot here in settings, I can change the access rights for the application itself. So I can change it from you to everybody in biostats. Now, of course, the only person in biostats at the moment is me, the creator of the space. But if I go to members, I can start managing who has access and rights to come into my space, interact with my projects, 
and view my outputs. There are a few ways that we can do this. I could do an invitation uh, requirement where I click on add member and I would put in your email address. You would get an email inviting you to this space. You'd have to sign up for Posit Cloud, but then you could become a member within this space. Or another common way is through sharing a link. And if you share a link, you can also select the role of the person who is going to be invited in and change the permissions associated with what their status would be, again, in this biostats space. Just for an example, I'm gonna copy the sharing link and quickly go off screen to another account that I have. I'm gonna get the invitation. I'm gonna accept the invitation. And now that I've done that, I'm going to be able to refresh my page here. And you can see in addition to the demo user, what we started with, I've now brought in a contributor named Alex Chisholm, who has a certain sets, set of rights. And going back to content, because I made these two pieces of content available to everybody who's a space member, now Alex Chisholm on his account will be able to see these two uh, pieces of content, open up my project, save it um, as a new one for himself, or interact directly with my application and start playing with that interactive dashboard that we made. The final bit that I wanna show you here and another benefit of Positive Cloud is when you have a lot of people in a space and you have a lot of content that could be interacted with, it's nice to know who is finding value in what. So if you click on the usage tab, you're gonna find a set of usage analytics for the specific space that you happen to be in. You can set it to calendar month or your billing month or the usage period if you happen to be on a paid plan. Um, we just started this space, so you wanna expect a lot of activity. But if you go in here, you can see that both the demo user and Alex Chisholm, the other member, are accounted for. The person we invited hasn't interacted with anything yet, so they don't have any compute hours associated with the assets. But if I click on demo user, you're gonna be able to find out just exactly what pieces of content that this person has been engaging with. And you can see most of the compute time has been associated with the project for RNA analysis, more so than the output itself. I know we covered a lot of information in this, in this short tour, but I think it touched on all of those major parts, um, those pillars, those building blocks of Posit Cloud that we started with today. We were able to create a new project, publish an output, both of which were based on a live data connection. We showed a little bit about member management within your space, and then looking at usage analytics to see what people are up to. So we've been able to do a lot. I hope you enjoyed that demonstration of Posit Cloud. We continue to innovate and add features and functionality. I encourage you to visit posit.cloud to create a free account today and reach out to us if you have any questions. And we're happy to take some here as well during Q&A. Thanks so much.